What you said. I told you that it's time to start the show. That you only meant well. Yeah, the show's well, gonna do of well. Course you did. What you said. I said, let's go. That it's all full of a bad. Yeah, it's probably of gonna be like the best did. podcast. What you said. God, do I have to keep repeating that myself? Just what we need, but you decided this. Hold up, I what thought we both say. decided to do this. What did she say? I said, let's start the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to What You Say, an OC podcast. My name is still Elise Daly. And my name is now Scott Daly. And together, <laughs> we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. <coughs> this is the podcast where each and every week, my <laughs> wife, Elise, and I go through the hit 2000s teen drama, The OC, episode by episode while she coughs off mic. This week on the show, we are co- <laughs> covering season two, We're coughing. episode 23, the penultimate episode of season two, entitled The O C S E A. We're going to have to say that every time. Like we say under this. the C. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I swallowed wrong. You did? I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you, that happens. You should learn how to swallow correctly. You've been doing it for a while now. You're 31 years old. Yeah, well. Sometimes the saliva just doesn't like to go the right way. Elise is playing footsies with me under our, our I'm desk I'm not playing right footsies. Now. I'm just trying to rest my foot on top of yours. I do that all the I time. I feel like you're playing footsies with me. You're the one that keeps moving your foot. Well, you put your foot on mine, and I, yeah. I'm sorry I made the assumption that I was having footsies played with do me. Do you want to play footsies? I'm always down for a game of footsies. <laughs> okay. We'll play footsies. Can I ask you a question? What? How does one learn... I, I don't remember learning what footsies was. I don't know. But every that's like something that everyone knows about, right? I think so. Just playing some footsies. Just playing some footsies. Playing some, who wins in the game of footsies? Is there a winner? Um, My foot's on top. <laughs> <laughs> that's because I'm just having a good time and you're like slamming your foot down. I know. Because you play. That's just how I play. Too violent. At least it's a very I, violent person. I play to win. <laughs> Remind me to tell you something that I I had to teach someone last week, but I I it's I need to share it off. I can't really share. Well, it that's here. just mean to our listeners. I'm is sorry. what that is. It's just it's a I can't. I understand. That I can't you're not, out this you're, person. You're literally not allowed to talk about this stuff on the podcast, but therefore it becomes mean to just tease these poor people. <sighs> And then there's things that they have in their life that they don't share with us. Well, yeah, but they don't like tell us that, hey, by the way, something's going on. It's a good story, but I can never tell you. Yeah. Well, unless I got permission from said people, I'm not going to share it with the public. Look, I am not, again, I'm not chastising you for that. Do you share, do you get my permission every time you share a story about you and me on any of your other podcasts? Um, I mean, like tangentially, like, Maybe, like, when you're asleep, I'll come to bed and be like, hey, Lisa, I just talked about the... Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I hate... Meredith used to do that to me. <laughs> Elise talks in her sleep when you talk to her. So if you talk to her in her sleep, she'll respond. And so you can get some cool stuff. Like, uh, Elise, um, I just ordered a new graphics card for my computer. Is that cool with you? And she's like, huh? Yeah. Although lately, you've, like, been saying no to things. <laughs> Have really, I? Yes, it's really frustrating. What have you asked that I've said no to? I can't get into it. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Glad I know where to draw the line in my subconscious. Uh, apparently. Can we um, talk about Rosies and Thornies? We can. Uh, so Rosies and Thornies is the part of the show where Scott and I, we look back on the week. We talk about the good, the bad, the Rosies and Thornies. And Scott, you want to start with your bad or my bad? Um, I think we did mine last week. We typically do yours because I introduce this part of the show. Yeah. So let's start with you. What's okay. up? Um, our poor dog Penny got bit on one of her back paws or stung or stung one of the two, but there's definitely uh, an insect looking bite mark Mark. bite on her foot. And it really bothered her so much that she has been gnawing at it. And so Mm -hmm. now she has probably a nickel sized, nickel sized patch of baldness on her her foot. And it just, it makes me sad and. I say it makes me sad having struggled with alopecia when I was little. So, like, I don't like, I don't, I don't like the little, the bald spots running around. It makes me feel sad for her. I know. I know. She just too itchy. 
I know. I think she's getting a little better about it. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I like and... the, the thing is, we didn't even notice it until we noticed it, and yeah. since then, we've been like really observant. But even so, it's like really hard to keep your eye on this dog twenty four hours a day. Like she's off right now. She just walked out of the room, and who knows what she's doing? What if our little dude has alopecia? Um, we'll deal with it. I don't know. They make medicine, don't they? They do. So I got we'll, shots in the head, and I was. We'll fine. get him some headshots. There was a guy in Call of Duty school. style. There's a guy in middle school, uh-huh. and he had alopecia so bad he lost all of his hair, That's a including bummer. his eyebrows. That's what happened to me, actually. It's just a real <laughs> bad case of alopecia. That you just have to shave every Shut few up. days. <laughs> the sad part is I really only have to shave the sides these days. <laughs> oh, poor Scotty. Uh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. we're well, I mean, have you been giving her any Benadryl? No, I guess we could. Yeah, we could do that. She, ha- I haven't seen her itch it lately. Hopefully, the well, hair will the thing back. is, is that whenever she lays down, her back legs come and lay right next to her front legs. And so it's just there. And so you can't it's really tell there. if she's licking her front paws or her back paws unless uh-huh. you really look. Plus, it's just like it's right in front of her face, and she's like, yeah. mm, I'm and gonna, I'm it's like you that. with food. If the food's in front of me. I'm going to eat it. That's true. If her paws in front of her, she's going to lick it. It's yeah, me and Penny exactly the same. It's true, actually. I think. Penny is more similar to me oh, than is she? she is to you. Is she? Yeah. I disagree. I disagree. Okay. No, she is. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about My Thorn? Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, My Thorn is a television show that we've been watching. And in fact, it's been the show that we've been watching on Monday evenings right before we sit down to record. So actually, we just got finished watching this week's episode. It is a documentary on HBO called The Vow. Um, mm-hmm. It is a documentary about the... Uh, business organization turned cult called Nixium. Um, if you don't recognize that name, you'll probably remember it as the sex cult that Allison Mack, star of the show Smallville, was arrested for sex trafficking in. Um, and th- the reason why this is my thorn is because I think this is like one of the most frustrating documentaries I've ever watched. Like, there's a lot of really disturbing and good information in this documentary. But the way that it is doling that information out is infuriating. I think we just watched episode nine of ten. And, and it could have been done in three so far. Yeah. So the so the thing about this documentary is they have like the most insane amount of footage because one of the former cult members that got out of it was like the videographer of the cult. And he because the the main guy Keith Ranieri is like a narcissist monster. Um, he wanted everything he did recorded, uh, like whether it be phone conversations or just him talking with people or the, he just wanted to be constantly recorded. So this guy has like hours and hours and hours and hours of footage of this cult leader and his cult lemmings. And so the documentary had like this embarrassment of riches to which they could work with to, to paste something together to tell the story of this thing. And they did it in like the worst way possible. Like it is just it is almost incomprehensible, like what the plot of the doc is Mm -hmm. like. They're just not building any narrative. And like that's documentaries are still a narrative, right? You still have to construct your it's a it's a, a narrative of reality. It's a narrative narrative of truth, hopefully. But you still have to construct it together and make editing decisions and make choices about what you're going to do. And this is like. It's like someone wrote it all down and no one said, hey, maybe you should cut this. You don't need this part or focus on the plot and stop like running off and doing this other stuff like this entire week's episode was about a portion of the organization and about how Keith Raniere is like incredibly regressive as far as his his gender politics and like what he what he thinks of men and women and men and women's role in society and was he was part of these groups that were like teaching men how to be better men and women how to be better women and and by better he didn't say submissive but anytime a man gets upset with you it's it's your fault and you should learn that because and, girls didn't go through anything that was humiliating yeah. when they were younger yes yeah, his yeah. whole his whole thing was girls sure. need girls need to be humiliated and pushed back against now because, because we when have they too were, much pride because we were, were never yeah. like that when we were younger <laughs> when they were kids they were coddled and, and nothing bad ever happened to it's just it's just ridiculous bullshit has it's, he ever talked to a woman I did, probably I not 
it's not a woman that like actually wanted to be there with him. It's just a one that uh. he's manipulated into forcing to be there. Um, it, it, it's it's so frustrating because I think there's there's a lot of very interesting stuff underneath this organization. This is an organization that preyed on almost exclusively white upper middle class people, people um, that you know are fairly well off. And but are questioning their lives and questioning like their a purpose. A lot of them in the film industry. A lot in the entertainment industry, yeah. Very low self esteem. I mean, t- like typical cult targets, right? Um, and I think there's a lot to be said about that and about you know the people, like the guy, the central guy that's got all this footage. I feel like the documentary has let him off the hook for what he did. And like you can see him beat himself up every so often, but like the way they frame everything, they're on his side and like good for you for getting out of there. But like he was way up in this organization. He was like the second command and he like knew all this shit was going on. And it wasn't until like it became clear that like they crossed some certain line that is a horrible line, like into actual like like sex cult shit that he was like oh i'm done with this now but like and only because his wife left it first yeah right and kind of like forced him out of it um and like and i'm not saying like we need to attack this guy we need to blame this guy blah. blah. i'm just saying the the show has kind of left him just like forgiven him it's clear it's just it's just so frustrating to me because like i'm not saying i could have done a better job with this because i am not an editor and i don't know how to construct this but i can see a version of the story that would make like a really good movie, like a really good 90 to 100 minute movie about this Nixium cult, about these people they brought in, about Keith Raniere, about Allie Mack and how she was co-opted into this thing and became a part of it. Like there's a really good story in there Um, and and a lot of really valuable information about how these people succeed in this kind of, you know, person to person and broad manipulation. But it just... It just doesn't want to do that. It's just like, no, it's just like they got 10 episodes. So they filled every minute of every episode. And it's so frustrating to me. I don't know why we keep watching. It's because because I got to finish it. Actually, I do, because there are moments in every episode, five minute chunks where I'm like, holy shit. And it's infuriating. And I hate that this thing happened. And it's interesting because it infuriates you. But like, that's just one little part of this Mm -hmm. hour long episode. Uh, The vow. It's on HBO don't watch it maybe <laughs> maybe someday someone will cut a movie of of yeah. this story and it'll be much we're better. trying to save you mm-hmm. well scott my rose for this week what is it it is the fact that i had a three-day weekend you did i did you so did. i didn't have to work today i got an extra day to sleep in which is so lovely so i got to make breakfast you did got you to, made me breakfast it was so good got to watch um great british Big show, mm-hmm. big off. You watched the episode where they made the the busts of oh people. Oh gosh, it was <laughs> awful. They also made rainbow bagels. They did a good job on that. I bet those are good. Yeah, I like bagels. We should have bagels next week for the season finale. Oh, that's a good idea. That's did you idea. ever eat bagels for dinner when you were? Did I ever up? eat bagels for dinner? No, I don't think I have. We would do bagels for dinner with cream cheese and smoked salmon and capers. Interesting. I mean, I mm-hmm. love all those things. Have you never had a bagel like that? No, I have. Oh. I just, not for dinner. Oh, yeah. No, sometimes we would do that for dinner. Anyway, so it was nice to have an, a three-day weekend. This this week is going to be full of a lot of trainings. I have training for three out of the four days that I actually have work, and it, they're all either half a day or a full day. So it's just, it's going to be full of meetings and it's going to be long, but. I think I'm getting some training this week also. Oh, well, that's good. So we good. can train together. What day are you getting trained I on? haven't been told yet. Oh, it's I'm very up all day right Tuesday, now. half day Wednesday, half day Thursday. Somewhere around there. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm glad you got your three day weekend. I was working, Me too. although for the first half of the day, no one was responding to my emails at all. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> You it, didn't know if you were really supposed to work today or yeah, not. No, is my company off today and no one told me? Um, but no, no. I, I'm glad I was working because everyone else was I as cleaned. Well. It looked nice in the kitchen. It looks wonderful. Living room. It looks wonderful. Reading did you book? vacuum? I didn't hear a vacuum go off. I never did the vacuum. It's probably because you were too concerned about poor little Penny. I know. You can vacuum tomorrow. Oh, I can. You can. Okay. Or I can vacuum tomorrow. I'll do it. One no, of us fine. can do it. It's fine. Just didn't expect it to be ordered to. I mean, one of us can do it. You don't have to. I can do it. No, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. If you insist, you can do it. Okay. 
What was your rose for this week? My rose um, was a book. I read a book this past week called The Green Mile, a mm-hmm. Stephen King book. Um, you've you haven't, but many people have, have probably not. seen the Tom Hanks movie based off of the story. Um, it is about a uh, death row and a death row inmate and some magic stuff that we won't get into. But uh, is there the magic stuff in the movie? Yeah. Why does he have to ruin things like that? I'm sorry. What? Nothing. Continue talking. You don't talking, even know please. what the story is about. I know what it's about. What is it about? It's about Tom Hanks being the prison guard to an inmate on death row. Yeah. That's what it's about. I mean, technically, yes, but it's a little more than that. Well, you asked me what it was about, and I told you what it was about. The point is, this is one of the handful of Stephen King books that I had never read. I think there's like five, maybe four now, um, and this was one of them. And Mm -hmm. I am going through my Stephen King books. I'm reading or rereading every single one of his books in publishing order, and I finally got to this book, a book I hadn't read before. I had seen the movie. I've seen the movie many times. The movie always destroys me. Um, I was not expecting to get as emotional about this book, but maybe it was because I was up really late. So I, I really wanted to finish this book. I was really into it. And you have those pregnancy hormones Yeah, I got those pregnancy hormones. The point is I was up to like 2.30 in the morning finishing this book and the last 30 pages, I was just a mess. I was just weeping. I'm surprised. So much you woke me up. Did I? I don't think I woke you up. Scott, what? You wake me up every night. Did I wake you up? Really? It's okay. Did my crying? I know I like burped at one point. <laughs> that was earlier in the night. That was before I had reached that point. And you go, "Are you okay?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad burp. Did not. My diet yesterday was not good, and my stomach was not happy with me. But that's not my rose. My rose is that I read this wonderful book, good. and it made me cry. And um. It was, it was a really good book. I have a thought. What's your thought? You said Rose, and I think Moira Rose. The Rose button. Did we finish Shit's Creek this week, or was that last week? It was this week. It was this week. Uh-huh. I should have had that have been a Rose. It was so good. Yeah. I really enjoy Shit's Creek a lot. Uh-huh. I'm really sad that it's over. Yeah. I'm, re- I'm re-watching it now. It's my new nighttime I, I saw, show. I saw. I saw. It's so good. Anyways. Sorry, I interrupted your. I just co-opted my rose there. I know. I that's just, a pretty. I thought about it's a pretty it. Shit's Creek thing to do. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm done. The Green Mile. It's a wonderful book. Stephen King is. He's just. I, I know some people don't like him, but he's just a phenomenal writer. And what he did in the story. We've done a lot of Stephen King stuff this past week. I mean, like you could do your Kingslingers always, but then you had your Stand by Me. We watched that. Mm-hmm. And then you did the podcast on that, and then you finished this book. Mm-hmm. And now you're going to take a break because you're going to read Bringing Up Bebe. Yeah, I have started that book. I've got like five books I'm going to read so before good. the next Stephen King Scott, book. Scott, we'll have good talks about Bringing Up Bebe. How to bring up our little dude. Our little Bebe. Like the Frenchman would. We're, uh, kid's going to be French. Ugh. No, I love the French. Apparently, they're way better at raising. Children than us, it says this book. Yes. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Get my owl eyes down. Is that it for Roses and Thorny Lilies? I think so. Anything else you want to add, Scott? No, that's it no? for me. Why don't you talk to me about this episode of The Orange County? The O-C-S-E-A is the 23rd episode of season two of The O-C. It was written by executive producer J.J. Philbin and directed by Michael Lang. It aired on May the 12th, 2005, which, Ma- yes, Scott. What? It aired on the 12th, because last week, I do stand corrected, there were two episodes that came out on May the 5th. That's crazy. Back to back. A double feature. I wish we would have done a double feature. This next episode is so good, Scott. Well, we'll have to wait till next week, because we've got to get through this episode yeah. first. This week on the OC, something, something, the Mentos is doing something. Yeah, I'll tell you what the Mentos is um, doing in just a little bit. All right. Well, this week, George Lucas is in town, and he wants uh, Zach and um, Seth's comic book really, really bad. And Zach and Seth find themselves in a choice between going to prom and going to meet George Lucas. And only one of them can do one of those things. But which will do which? They don't know. And there's there's fighting and disagreement, but they decide what to do in the end. 
and we'll talk about that. Also, the relationship between Ryan and Marissa is strained because Marissa won't tell Ryan what happened, even though he knows. And Trey tells Ryan what happens, knows. but he lies. Mm. Well, it's just the same old Trey. Also, Kirsten is alive and she's quitting alcohol, except she isn't because she's sneaking it and Sandy busts her. Ooh, and it's so much drama there. Yeah, and lastly, drama. and most importantly, Caleb what? Nichol dies of a heart attack May at he the very rest end in peace. of this episode. And Julie was going to kill him, but she didn't. Because natural causes took care of it for her. Yep. So that's this week's episode. Elise, what did you think of episode 23, The O.C.? Well, Scott, you brought it up. You brought up the Mentos and the Coke. But I, I brought it up so because I knew you were going to bring it here's up. Here's what's happening with okay, the Mentos go, and go the Coke. So we're outside, Scott. We're outside. We, at the end of last week, we, we went outside. We have opened the Mentos already. We have opened the Coke. And we took this outside. So what we did this week, Scott, is we started to pour the Mentos, but nothing's hit the Coke yet. So like we're like mid- Mento, like slow mo inside Coke bottle, Mentos yeah. Yeah. twirling. It's like Inception yeah. where we're cutting and back it's and it's like forth. the bubbles to the Coke are like fizzing up, and it's like, like trying in, to like, like kiss the Mentos oh, so that you like see the that the Mentos is like gonna have a reaction, but it hasn't quite reacted fully yet. Okay, so it hasn't <laughs> exploded yet. So again, I'm going to ask my question. Yeah. How did you like the episode? Scott, when you see those fizz <laughs> bubbles, and then you're just tapping that Mentos, you're getting excited. So th- You're getting excited because you know, Scott, you know what's going to happen. So I guess the, the Mentos hitting the Coke moment has to be... In something, the last episode. Something tra- well, yes. It has to be something Trey and Mar- Marissa related. That's because... Right. Well, because what else is there? Kirsten and Sandy? Yeah, but that's just going to be like... I think the big the big one in this was this episode. Summer and Seth? No. 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 Okay. It has to be. It has to be. There's only one big ongoing conflict left. Okay. Everything else has kind of revol- resolved itself. That's what you think, Scott. And it's all going to circle around the funeral for Caleb. How do you know that? Because the next episode is titled The Dearly Beloved. Yeah. That's the funeral thing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Scott. Well, there's a funeral. I really like this Maybe there's more than one. Who knows? These past three weeks have been a run that I don't think this show has ever seen before. These and and I'm hoping that they really stick the landing on the last episode because I had a great time with this episode. Scott. All this stuff is working for me. Scott, they're gonna stick that landing. It's gonna be a perfect ten. And it's gonna be a Gabby Douglas landing i don't who's gabby douglas the olympian gymnast okay am i supposed to know who that is yes why because she's famous the olympics got canceled this year yeah so but, no olympics or simone biles whichever one you that want to name say. i recognize well gabby douglas paved the path for simone biles like literally? Yes. Like she's a she's a path paver? Yes. I'm sorry. Back in my day, we watched the 1996 Olympics where that one girl Yeah, cuz you were old. Where that one girl did did the the the, the vault and uh-huh. landed on her hurt uh-huh. foot, but she did it. I don't remember her name either, but that yeah. was cool. That's, I'm really sad about the Summer Olympics. I always look forward to the it's Summer coming Olympics. Coming next year, maybe. Where's it going to be? It's Japan, right? I thought it was China. No, it's Japan. It's Japan. Yeah, it's Japan. Are you sure? Yes, positive. They're doing way better with this whole thing than we are. At least it's not here. Cases That's are true. cases are spiking again. <laughs> well, yeah, we have the first person that has a double 
double case. Double COVID. And the second one was worse than the first. Double COVID. We've gone way off topic already. Um, so I like the show. You like the show. Something, something, Mentos metaphor. Let's talk about our favorite and our least favorite parts of the episode, our rosies and thornies of the episode itself. And yes. let's start with the bad. Let's get that out of the way. At least what was your okay. least favorite part of this week's episode? Let's see, Scott. My least favorite part of this episode, you've already touched on it. Mm-hmm. Trey lies to his brother. Yep. And his brother wants to believe him because Ryan thinks that Trey has tried to turn a new leaf. And because he's tried to turn a new leaf, he thinks that his brother would never do anything to wrong him. So he's believing Trey. And that's just awful because Trey is just trying to be manipulative. And it just makes me mad. When you were in Miami, Marissa and I, we got drunk together. And you came on to her. Why do you always assume that it's my fault? Because it always is. Anyway, we were both wasted. Really wasted. On the beach. And your girl, she can drink, but you can't hold her liquor. Look, I'm sorry, Ryan. She threw herself at me. I said this was going to happen, didn't I? Last you week, did. I you said, said it was going to happen. He's going to confront him about it, and Trey's going to say, she hit on me, man. And that's kind of exactly what he says here. Um, it sucks. It really yeah. sucks. But, I mean, you you say that he wants to believe him, but at the end of the episode, he, like, bails on Trey. Well, the and, only reason he does that is because of Teresa. He wouldn't have done it had Teresa not been there. Well, yeah. But he meets up with Teresa, who's back on the show temporarily, um, Ryan does not get to meet his potential baby because she hides it from him successfully. But uh, Teresa convinces Ryan that he's being stupid because he's believing all these people. It's actually really frustrating because like Jess comes up and Jess tells him that Marissa's having an affair with Trey and he like believes Jess. And I'm like, Ryan, it's Jess. It's if Jess, someone Ryan. who's an awful human being comes up to me and tries to tell me a lie about you, mm-hmm. no. It's like Donald Trump rolls up to your door and says, I've been selling drugs to kids. You don't believe him. He's Donald Trump. The Deaf You show on uh, Netflix. The what? The Deaf You. It's Deaf University. Okay. Where are you going Anyways, with this? They give everybody sign names and... Every time a new president is elected, they give him a sign name. Uh-huh. And they said that if you are a fan of Donald Trump, that you spell his name out. But if you don't, then his sign name is a toupee. <laughs> and you can, like, spell his name. And so you can always tell if people like him or not, whether they use his sign name or not. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's, like, the entire deaf community. That is his name is a toupee sign. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love it. I know. I thought it was funny. That's why I wanted to share it with you. See, I thought you would like it. I did. Yeah. But so Trey lies. That's your least favorite part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's going to have consequences. We don't know what those consequences mm-hmm. are. It's going to be something to do with Mentos. Maybe. Trey. Trey, Trey, Trey. You could have had, you could have been a contender. You could have been somebody. You could have, but he chose the wrong path yep. again and again and again. And again, Scott, yes, what was sticking in your side this week? You know what my least favorite part of this episode is? What? George Lucas. Well, you just don't like him in general. That's not true. You don't like George Lucas. That's not true at all. It's so true. Why is that true? Because you didn't want to name our kid George. <laughs> that's, that's And you true. put down your foot when I said Lucas. You, I don't think you suggested either of those names. I did. I don't think that's true. I did. I have nothing against George Lucas. He made uh, some really good movies, and he made some really bad movies. And then he was in this show. And he was in this show. And I hate when they put people in these shows. Playing themselves. George Lucas is not an actor. George Lucas cannot act. And George Lucas was in a a portion of the show that required some emotional acting. So... The reason George Lucas is in the show is because he has apparently read Atomic County and he wants to make it his next movie. This this is a thing that I don't think the show is doing a very good job of. I'm very unclear about like so they ha- last week was the release party. Mm-hmm. So like the comics out now. Bim. 
You know, people can get advanced copies of things. I understand that. But is it a hit? Like, is it being well reviewed? Like, they're, it just oh, yeah. feels like the co- like the success of the comic, we're just being told it and we're not seeing any of it. It's just weird. It's just well, weird. We saw it because George Lucas wants to get in on it. But they don't actually talk about the comic in this episode well, at all. Because Seth just hijacks the whole conversation. Which and I actually liked that part. I loved Seth talking about you know he asked George Lucas did you go to prom and basically so the whole thing is um they're trying to decide who wants to take summer to prom and who wants to go meet George Lucas they both want to do both of them but they can't make a decision don't step on my rose Seth gets gets George Lucas he goes there but all he's thinking about is summer and so he asked George Lucas did you go to prom and do you regret it and George Lucas gives this whole big speech well actually I didn't I spent my time being creative, drawing Ewoks, Jar Jar Binks. Good to know. George Lucas can skip his prom, I can skip mine. No, no, wait a minute. I do regret not going to my prom. Really? Because it's like a seminal moment? Exactly. Mr. Lucas, I am so sorry. We can get back to the point now. No, 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 wait. It would be good for me to talk about this. The prom is a great American tradition. It's important to experience the things of being a teenager, when you're a teenager. I went off and made my film American Graffiti. I'd never had the experience of a prom, and I had to make a movie about it. I felt hopelessly inadequate without having really done it myself. Not having been part of that pivotal moment in teenage life, uh, I felt very sad and alone. The problem is, he gives it in George Lucas can't act mode. And it's, like I said, it's the emotional core of the episode. It's the thing that makes Seth realize that he needs to go and be with Summer well, at prom. Well, the thing that makes him realize is that Zach shows up and says, hey, man, we should have switched. Well, n- not really. Like, he was not really. It, he wouldn't they have ha- gone. They happened simultaneously. I don't know if he would have gone had Zach not shown it's, up. It's, like, we're quibbling over points we can never know. The point is Zach I know. did show up. I know. No, you don't. Yes. The point is... This is an important speech. It's the emotional core of the episode. It's what makes Seth start to change his mind. And it's delivered very poorly because George Lucas can't act. Okay. No George Daly or Lucas Daly. Lucas Scott Daly. Nope. No, I don't like that. George Scott? No. George Bailey? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) We're trying to figure out a name. For all these people. I think they've figured that out. Yeah. Are you going to go uh, with your thing or? Would you like me to move to my rose? Are you done well, with your thorn? Yeah. I mean, you just like ripped my thorn up and, and then stepped on it and told me I was wrong. So yeah, let's oh. move on to your thing. I'm sorry. I was going to talk about my rose. Yeah. And that is Summer. Summer Roberts. She takes a stand, Scott. She had been going back and forth between Z- uh, Zach and Seth. They had both decided they were going to go after Summer. And then this week, she decides that she doesn't have to decide. And that they are both being ridiculous. And she wants to go to prom. And so she doesn't care who takes her. But she wants to go. And one of them is. And so one of them's got to show up. Summer, hey, we were both just talking. Save it, Cohen. I'm done listening to your excuses. Summer, we're really sorry. Are you willing to forgive us? Nope. Don't want to forgive you. But prom is tomorrow night. And I have wanted to go my whole life. So I'm not going to let our demented little threesome ruin that for me. So I'm going with one of you. Well, which one of us are you going to take? Don't care. I am too pissed off and tired to choose. So you're going to decide. Don't care how. But tomorrow I will be in front of my house in a dress and one of you will pick me up. Got it? Good. And I just really appreciated that moment. Didn't you? Yeah, it's good. It's good. She's tired of this nonsense. She's yeah. tired of the shit. So she says, put- you guys can figure it out. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And they flip a coin. You know who else does that? Who? Reed. Reed does do that. They're putting Summer and Reed like each other. Yeah. They did try and find similar looking actresses, I think. They are similar looking. Yeah. yeah. But I don't like Reed. I like Summer. Yeah. Well, Summer is just better all around. Duh. She's more fun. Duh. And and you know what happens? I, summer summer maybe didn't want to choose but she also did because when zach steps out of that limo at the prom the look on summer's face is i oh, wanted it to be seth oh 
I this know. guy. Well, I think she also knew the same thing that you knew when you were watching the show and you go, well, this is easy. Zach goes to the thing and then Seth goes with Summer because Zach's the business guy. Right. Zach is so much better at meetings. Yeah. Seth sucks at meetings, as we see in this episode where he doesn't talk about the fucking comic at this entire yeah. meeting. Every time they've had a meeting, he's blown it. Yeah. Like the, the choices here were actually quite simple. Um, and like, I think this is important. And I think what is actually going to happen is I think Seth is going to let the comic go and Zach is going to take the comic because like when they learn about George Lucas is interested in the comic book, Zach says, do you know what this could mean for me and my career? Seth says, I want to meet George Lucas and talk about Star Wars. Yeah. And so like I, I, and I'm not saying Seth doesn't like the comic. He loves the comic. He loves comics. He loves this stuff. But I think Zach is so much more invested in the actual business of creating and selling comics and becoming a comic book artist um, or, or business person. Yeah. I guess. Seth He's not just artist. wants to do the artwork. Yeah. So I think He's that's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. Yeah. That's what. Um, but yeah. Um, so the George Lucas part didn't like it. But Summer loved it. Loved it, Summer. I know. She got to go to her prom. They she always, got to be prom queen. They always, they always do this on teen shows. I think it's weird. They junior always and do. They always make like this is a grand, important tradition, and it's junior prom. Like I, I didn't go to. Did you go to junior prom? We I didn't, didn't go to have junior a junior prom. prom. We did. I just didn't go to it. I went to sen- senior prom. Is like the big deal. Yeah. Like that's the one that's like you have to go to your senior prom. Blah blah blah. But I think the show is just like, it's like, it's the end of the year. We need some important event. Oh, prom's around the end of the year. I think Smallville did this too, where like they were freshmen and there was a prom. that they all, And I'm like, they're freshmen. What's going on here? They just want is an there, end of the year dance. Does every school have like an end of the year dance and just call it a prom? Is that, or is, where is that? I don't that? know. I don't know. I mean, some some places have spring dances. For us, our spring dance was always senior prom. And if you weren't a senior, you didn't get to go unless you were asked. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have too many, like, dances, I don't think. Homecoming and prom. Yeah. I think that was it. One in the fall and one in the spring. Uh-huh. Everybody could go to homecoming and only seniors and select individuals could go to prom. Was your prom at the school... In all these shows, they always make the prom at the school. But my prom was at a hotel in I Dallas. think they were at South Fork. I don't know what that is. South Fork Ranch. Nope. Where Dallas was filmed. Okay. It's a big ranch out. I think, I'm pretty sure it was there. There's like a little, or not little by any means, uh, barn event area. I'm pretty sure that's where it was. I think... Because I went to two. I went to one my sophomore and then one to my senior. And I think they were both You went there. when you were a sophomore? I did, Scott. Were you with a senior? I was, Scott. You bad. You no. bad, girl. You little, little 15-year-old. No. Going to prom with a senior. It was a fun time. You bad. We were just friends. You bad. Just I didn't friends. go with a date to my senior prom because I was a very, very shy boy mm-hmm. and didn't want to ask anyone. I went with a friend. I went with a group. I went with a group. A bunch of us went together. I went with a, a group, good time. but I had a date. It was one of those where it was like, you know what? We had said it a long time ago where if we don't want to go with anybody else, I'll go with you. Makes so a, we did. really makes a person feel appreciated. When we it's had a great like time. Last possible choice. No one else asked me. It wasn't my last possible choice. I guess I'll go with you. I was really excited to go with him because he was lots of fun. And it made it more fun because another guy that he was friends with ended up going with another friend of mine and made it a really good time. No, none of that. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. What do I mean, Scott? I'm not going to say it. Our baby's present. In your stomach. Yeah, you know what happened? What? Nothing. Sure, babe. Sure, babe. Yep. Prom. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, Lise. What? Um, You want to hear what my favorite part of the episode is? Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that yet. My favorite part of this episode is, unsurprisingly, Julie Cooper. (laughs) 
<laughs> and the Julie Cooper storyline in this episode has to do with Caleb and her divorce. And there's a part very early in the episode where uh, Julie brings the divorce papers to Sandy. And Sandy basically is like, I don't know, Julie, this looks ironclad to me. All Caleb has to do is file the papers by Monday with the county clerk. Unless you can figure out a way to stop him, you're out of luck. And I'm like, oh, he gonna die. <laughs> I, was like, I was immediately like, uh, Caleb's dead. <laughs> and, and I mean, Julie kind of thinks the same thing. And there is there is a time she invites Caleb over for like the night before he would file the papers for it, for like one final you and me have dinner together. And I'm like, she's going to poison this dude. And she walks out wearing the skimpiest fucking bikini I've ever seen. Um, she looks amazing. She looks amazing. Yeah, I Scott, I don't think I'm gonna look like that when I'm her age. You I'm sorry. Are beautiful, and I don't care. She okay. she looks good, and she's gonna poison him in the margaritas. And then at the very last minute, Julie Cooper gets a conscience and changes her mind. She's not gonna poison him, and so she goes back in to make him a non-poisoned margarita. And while she's doing that, he's sitting by the side of the pool, enjoying life for the maybe the first time ever. First time he'd ever put his feet in the pool, looking up at the stars, and all of a sudden. Julie! Oh, and then he falls into the water, splash, sinks right to the bottom, which is weird, because that's not how humans work. Um, and he dies. He dies. Yeah. And what, what makes this death even worse, aka more dramatic, aka better, is that the other plot line in this episode that neither of us have really talked about is the uh, Kirsten is an alcoholic now plot line. Um, Which we can go back to now and talk about. You remember when that boy Ian Toynton that you were so upset with kept on doing those weird shots at different things and you're like, he just doing these shots of all these different objects and cutting all these different places and it doesn't make sense. Okay. It was of the alcohol. He was alluding to the alcoholism. I don't know if that's true. It's true. Um, we learned they wanted that, to highlight it. Did we know that Kirsten's mother was an alcoholic before no. this episode? No. So yeah, we learned in this episode that Kirsten's mother was an alcoholic, um, which paints her drinking in a much different light. It's as much different than just going on a, a week long bender. This is going on a week long bender when there is a history of alcoholism in your family, and we see that she says she's going to quit, but she doesn't. And the most heartbreaking part in this episode when you've watched it all is the moment when her father comes over and he's being a jerk. Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. He's being Caleb Nickel and he's being a total asshole to her. But she gets he, he basically accuses her of being an alcoholic and she reacts. She blows up. Mm -hmm. She blows up like it's almost to the point where like she's freaking out because she kind of knows what he's saying is true. And she's like and, and she's got a lot of pent up frustration at what kind of father he was but like the last thing she tells him her last words to her father are um at least i'm not gonna die alone like you are and he did and he did <laughs> later that day whew, whew. well i mean julie was kind of there but mm, not really no he was sitting by the side of the pool by himself as his ex-wife was switching out his poisoned goblet with a new one <laughs> And he dies alone. Yep. Um, and that's the death of Caleb. But I thought, I, like... He's got to go do Lost. Look, yeah, that's true. Um, look, though, the thing is, I think this is great television. I, like, it, it, it kind of... It's kind of hilarious how the teen stories and the adult stories in the show are almost two different kinds of show because we have the adult stories and it's like kirsten's an alcoholic there's a big affair there's a car accident there's a a, a, a murder plot a porn tape and then a, a a freak sudden heart attack that both solves julie's problems and creates problems for kirsten it's so soap opera-y and then the kid stuff like i'm not saying there's not drama there but it's just a different kind right it is it is like half of the show is a teen drama and half of the show is full soap opera. And it is kind of weird how they both work, but they do because you know, I love both of them. You think about it this way. The adults, they're the Coke. Jesus. And the kids, they're the Mentos. And, <sighs> and the adults are the Coke because the Coke on its own can have its own explosions. The Mentos, they need the Coke. Mm. And let me tell you, Scott, mm -hmm. 
explosions. Mm. <laughs> I hope I hope this um this metaphor dies with the season. I yeah. hope it di- I was hoping it was going to die with Caleb, but apparently not. Nope. Caleb's not the explosion, Scott. I've 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 learned that now. Thank you, Elise. Did you really think that would be it? I didn't I didn't know he was going to die. So, no, I didn't think it was going to be it. Scott. What? Tisk tisk. I think it's such a fun plot idea to have her change her mind at the last minute, not poison him, and then he dies anyway. I think that's fun. It's fun in a like it's only only thing that storytelling can do because that kind of shit just doesn't happen in real life. And it won't. We didn't get a prenup. It won't happen to us. I don't have a million dollars to give you. <laughs> Sorry. What? Why did I not, marry you? Doesn't matter if you're a prenup and all what do you all mean? money. What do you mean you don't have a million dollars? Not even close, baby. Not even close. Ugh, I wore a dress similar to that. Stop. You're moving ahead. We haven't. We've got a transition. Come on, into- Scott. Come on. Tell me about the style in the OC. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Tell me about the style in the OOC. You did OC. Yeah. <laughs> you did your own backtrack there. Come on. <laughs> What's the matter with that? Nothing, nothing. Well, now you know you can do backtracks. It'll be good. This week is the prom, and that means it's prom dress time. And first up, we have Summer Bilson's prom dress. Robert's? Summer Bilson. Okay. We got Summer's prom dress. Summer is, she says it's magenta. It's not magenta. This does not look magenta. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad because I, I thought I was going crazy, but it's this no. pink and white. Um, it's got stripies and, and patterns. It's a pattern. It has like a silk underneath it with an overlay of a tulle mm-hmm. It's strapless. Yeah, strapless. And it's good that Zach didn't know what magenta was and didn't try to get a corsage that. Magenta is like deeper, almost maroon. Yeah. It's like a deep, deep pink. Yeah. This is like light this is pink. pink. This is like light pink. Yeah. Um, but he just got a white corsage, which matches perfectly with the white of the dress. It looks great. Mwah. Um, it's it's a strapless dress. It looks really good. Looks and really her good. earrings. I don't know if you have her earrings for this, but her earrings, they're the similar color, but they also kind of remind you of coral, which was kind of fun because it was the under the sea theme. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. And it speaking good. of jewelry that reminds you of under the sea, we have Marissa's ah, yes. dress. Marissa <laughs> nice transition is, there. Marissa is wearing a white strapless dress, um, but she is adorned with pearls yes. all around her neck. Chanel wearing, pearls. How do you know they're Chanel? Oh, I see that. I see the thing. Wow. <laughs> Look at you. It's the C's. Yeah. The C's. One is one way, and they're touching in the middle. Yeah. The, the C's are friends with each other. The they Chanel are. C's. Ah. Chanel. Uh, those are expensive pearls, I bet. They are. are really expensive yeah. girls. <laughs> Out on loan. Rocking at the dance. Um, she looks good, too. I think it's a solid look. I think that all look of their prom, prom dresses. dresses look nice. Mm-hmm. They had a dress earlier this, or they had a dance earlier this season. You remember at the very beginning? Mm-mm. And they had some questionable dresses. I didn't well, I like think, them. I feel like when it comes to prom, like. You have to be elegant. And I, have like, I ever shown you my prom dress? You haven't. Oh, I'll have to show you my prom dress. Um, I have, really liked have it. Have I ever shown you my prom tux? It no. was a tuxedo. The guys are boring. It was a black tux. Mine was a champagne color dress. Ooh. It was a halter. Did you drink any champagne? I did not. Champagne. I did not. Was it from champagne? No, it was from BCBG. Well. What? Well. Isn't someone trendy? Yeah. <laughs> someone looked good. Isn't someone trendy 20 years ago? And still relevant. Um, yeah, so that's the prom dresses. Uh, Seth is not wearing a tux because he's just wearing a jacket and he puts it over his he puts it over his clothes that he took the, the George Lucas meeting on, which is was super casual considering it was a George Lucas meeting. I would have definitely suited up for that meeting with George Lucas. Oh, yeah. Like it's George Lucas. It's, yes, it's George Lucas. You have to. Facebook is down. I can't pull up my prom picture oh for you. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Because that would have made great have audio. It it would have been really pretty, and I was going to have you describe it. Okay, dress. 
champagne colored. No pearls. You could pull it up if you want. No Chanel pearls. It's okay. You don't have it's to. It's going to take forever to pull it up. You just have to go to my profile. I understand that. No, I don't want to do this. You don't want to do too, it? It's going to take too long. Ugh. Plus, we got this to look at. Here's Julie Cooper in her incredibly skimpy bikini. It's, it's true. A, it's a leopard print bikini, and she's wearing a tie at the bottom. She looks good, babe. She looks good. I know. She does. Damn. Julie Cooper. I will not look like that when I am her age, Scott. Well, how old do you think? That's a good question. How old do you think she is in this show right now? Um, 40s. Okay. Um, what is her name? In real life? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We got to figure this out. Oh, my God. I'm trying to find her and I'm seeing all these characters that we haven't met yet. Yeah, be careful. No spoilers. Oh, I forgot about a new character that comes in next season that I like. Um, Melinda Clark. Melinda Clark. That's Melinda her. Clark was born in 1969. So in 2005, she was 36. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> I told you about 40. This, you can't really see the bottom. She's almost, she's a year older than me. You can only kind of see it. That's a very pretty dress, It Elise. has a very tapered thing at the bottom. It's a very pretty dress, Elise. Thank you. You've got a really lot of pretty. makeup around your eyes. Yeah. I was really heavy into the eyeliner. I can tell. <laughs> you, you've grown out of that. I have. So this is my date. Yeah, he looks great. <laughs> He looks really You would have cool. really liked him. He looks really cool. He's pretty fun. <laughs> you guys would get along. I'm sure. We, <laughs> I get along with everyone. No, but like you'd really get along. Can we move on from the style section, please? I think it's time yeah. for relationship status. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about some relationships. Yes. Sorry. Thank you for that transition, Scott. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our first couple this week... Sandy and Kirsten Cohen. Last week, they were at an 8 out of 10. They had gone on a steady incline. This week, Sandy takes care of Kirsten after her car wreck, where the cop informed Sandy that she blew a .08. Sandy suggests that Kirsten check herself into a rehab facility to help her recover, but she says she had the wake-up call she needed and is going cold turkey on her own. Sandy's hesitant, but supportive and helps her throw the alcohol away. Later, Sandy finds a secret stash in Kirsten's purse and is upset that she is still hiding. Also, to mention, when she found out her dad died, she took the bottle, she walked away, and Sandy didn't even try to stop her. He just stood there, like, dumbfounded on what is he supposed to do. So we're going to knock him down to a 5 out of 10. And this is a very 5 out of 10 glass half empty look. We have another couple that's a 5 out of 10, and it's very glass half full. But this is half empty. Okay. Poor okay. Sandy and Kirsten. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I think the end of this episode is actually just really sad because, like, Sandy just confronts her, and he's just like, "I, I believed you. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you told me you had a handle on this, and mm -hmm. I, and I believed you. Um, and she didn't. My jaw really popped. Sad. That doesn't sound good. Um, so it's really sad. But um, okay, well, okay. Let's You've got the next one. The next one is Julie Cooper and Caleb Nichol. <laughs> uh, they, last week. They were a zero out of ten. Well, last week we gave them a zero out of ten. But I, we have to <laughs> talk about this and then we'll remove them because definitely the relationship's dead. As long as both of these people were alive, there was always chance they could rekindle this th this relationship. Except, oops, Caleb had a heart attack and died. Um does this mean they aren't divorced within a year? Yes, it does. It means he's not going to file the paperwork and she's going to get all his money. That's she's exactly what it. it means. Okay. Of course it is. He hasn't, okay. he hasn't filed the papers yet. She's going to get right. anything. We are going to talk next about Summer and Seth. Last week, they were at a one out of 10. Seth knows about Summer's dream to go to prom this week and be prom queen Ever since she was in the fifth grade, as much as he wants to be there for her, he also wants to meet George Lucas. Seth ends up going to the meeting, but he can only talk about summer and prom. He runs to her rescue when she stands on the stage alone as prom queen. Way to go, Seth. This is our glass half full couple at a five out of ten. Can I just say, 
that my my runner up for favorite part of this episode might be Seth standing on that stage and the and, heckles and the people heckling. I him. thought that was what you were gonna pick. I was so surprised that you didn't. I mean, you kind of did summer standing up for herself, so I didn't. I wanted to highlight the other parts of the episodes. Okay, but he's standing up at the stage and people are just heckling him. <laughs> and one person's just like, Seth Cohen is a tool. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I love when you laugh at things that you think are really funny because you have a different laugh and it's really great to hear. What do you mean? You just, you have some different laughs. And when you really think something's funny, like you can tell with the laugh that you have and you really thought it was funny when they did that. Well, now I'm so conscious. No, no, I'm not complaining. I think it's great and I love it. Okay. Well, let's move on to Ryan and Marissa. Last week, we gave Ryan and Marissa a 3 out of 10. Ryan still does not know what to believe about the Marissa and Trey thing, but thanks to Teresa, he decides to believe Marissa's side of the story. Yes, believe her. But the whole truth still isn't out, and the Mentos hasn't quite hit the Coke yet. We're giving them a very tentative 4 out of 10. Yep. Okay. Trey and Jess, they were 2 out of 10 last week. They're still hanging out, although we don't really see them together this week. Yeah, she's just popping in to fuck things up and then so, move on. So, 2 out of 10? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last one, you're up. Summer and Zach. Last week, 3 out of 10. Zach threw his hat into the ring for Summer, but like Seth, dreams of meeting George Lucas, too. Zach goes to the dance with Summer, and she helps him realize that he really didn't want to be there with her and needed to get to the meeting to work on the comic. So he is at the dance with Summer. He realizes he doesn't want to be there. She realizes she doesn't want him there. She really wanted Seth. Seth really wanted to be there. Zach makes that happen. And so that's that's the end for Summer and Zach, right? That's Maybe great. he'll give uh, Francesca a call. Oh, yeah. Maybe he will. She's not real. Well, Scott, that's it for the relationship status of this episode. But we've got something new this week. Well, first, we want to say what next week's episode is. Next week oh. is the season finale Um, As we said, titled The Dearly Beloved, this is going to be the aftermath of Caleb's death. How is it going to affect Kirsten? We see her at the very end of this episode. Even after Sandy has chastised her about her drinking, she picks up the bottle of vodka and walks off screen. Mm -hmm. Um, To go back on another, my dad just died bender, um, which normally I would be like, yeah, I get that. (laughs) But not a good thing. So we'll see. We will see. Um, And of course, we have that Coke, that Mentos. It's going to happen next week. It'll happen. Tune in. Will it? We really need to get a Will Mentos. It, like, if we don't get sponsored by Mentos in, <laughs> in, in, within a year, I'm going to be really fucking disappointed. It's a Mentos Coke experiment, babe. It's All so right. fun. So we're going to conclude this episode on a new segment because we are on the never-ending quest to make this show about the OC as little as possible. But I had an idea <laughs> for a new segment, and I thought it was fun, and I think this is a great week to try it out on. So my idea for the segment, Elise, was called mm-hmm. Dear Elise. Yeah, it is people coming to you with relationship advice and you giving them your advice from your many, many years of successfully navigating romantic relationships and marriage and perfect track. record. One day, children, um, you are not a professional. I think we should say that. But oh, yeah, but you're basically a professional. Um, the problem should is you follow my advice. Probably not. The problem is we didn't have, anyone, have a laugh. We, we couldn't like we don't have enough listeners for people to like regularly s- submit advice to us. So that didn't work. And then I was like, maybe I could just like make up fake things and write it. But that was a lot of work. So instead, I decided to go to a subreddit called r slash relationship advice. This is a place where you can just post what's going on in your relationship and crowd feed uh, what you should do about it. Um, so I, I spent a couple hours on there today and I found <laughs> no, you spent and I found the best the best post to start off the new segment called Dear Elise. So here we go. Yes. I'm not going to say any names. I'm not going to say any uh, account names or anything. Um, okay. Although if these people cared about privacy, they probably wouldn't post about their relationship on a public subreddit. That's but nice of you. Yeah. Dear okay. Elise, my boyfriend might love LeBron James more than me. Should I be concerned? My boyfriend has always been a huge LeBron James fan. I get it. He's a great player. And he did great in the recent NBA Finals. So to some extent, it makes sense that he'd be on top of everyone's minds. But for the last few weeks, every time we've just had sex and are cuddling afterward, the first thing my boyfriend says is something about LeBron. How great he is. How well he just played, etc. This is within minutes of us having sex. I feel like his focus should be on me. 
And the last time this happened, I joked that we should invite LeBron to our wedding, and he said that would definitely make it the best day of his life. I would consider it the best day of my life, no matter what celebrities were there. Now, I'm not jealous or an insecure person, but I just feel like when we're cuddling, I'm usually thinking about him, us, and I just kind of wish he'd be thinking about me, too. It just kind of throws me off when we have just been in this super intimate, and the first thing he thinks, talks about, is LeBron James. Should I be concerned? Does this mean he isn't that into me? Elise, what do you think? I don't think you should be concerned at all. But well, I guess you need some context too, because like, are you are you laying there cuddling and watching ESPN? Because if you're doing that, then duh, he's going to be talking about that. It doesn't say that in the question, so let's say no. They're just okay. laying there in okay. silence, post coital. Okay. And he just starts talking about LeBron James. Well, here's the deal: LeBron James is good at everything. <laughs> so, you know, it may not be he's you know thinking about LeBron James like he wishes LeBron James was there instead of you. Maybe he's just hoping he's as good as LeBron James. May, you know, I, that's what I think. Here's what I, I think. He's happening. like feeling this self doubt of like, man, LeBron James. LeBron James is so good. Man, he was just awesome at this game. I hope I can be as good as LeBron James. And so he's just trying. He's just trying all these LeBron moves that he sees on the TV in the bedroom. And it may be failing. It may be working. But you know what? He's like, if I can at least let her know that I'm like trying to embody LeBron, then at least it'll be good. So I got to bring LeBron up. I'm trying to imagine someone <laughs> watching LeBron James play basketball yeah. and saying, I need to do some of those moves in the bedroom and what that would look like. You know, I think I think you need to take this as a compliment. I think he's laying there thinking, my girlfriend is the fucking LeBron James of having sex. <laughs> yeah. And so the, LeBron's popping into my yeah. head. There's also the other thing of, you know, you always get one celebrity you get to have a so hall this pass man, with. This man would fuck LeBron James. If that's your hall pass, that's your hall pass. LeBron James, I want to fuck you. You know, there you go. I mean, here, if do you want the advice or the opinion of a man? Sure. Um, after you've finished doing it, the last thing you're thinking about is sex anymore. Yeah. It, like, it, you, it goes away. Yeah. And random stuff pops into your head and he's been wa- he's in the finals. There's been yeah. a lot of basketball going on. So he's thinking about he's probably like he's probably f- finished with sex and he's laying there and he still loves you, but he's like when's the next game? And then yeah. that that starts him down a train of thinking about LeBron James. Yeah. I don't think it means he doesn't like you. No problem. Just post sex. It just goes right out the brain. You Maybe know? you should learn more about LeBron and be able to hold a conversation with him. I don't know if she said her problem is that she couldn't talk about LeBron James, just that it feels weird to be laying there. I don't know. We're married now, so like. It's totally different. Yeah. <laughs> we just like to start doing chores. There's no cuddling anymore. No. Just go do chores. Yeah. Scott, go vacuum. <laughs> Put some pants on first. No, I will not. Whatever you want to do, babe. Well, that was dear Elise. So I hope yep. hope we've helped you, random person that's definitely not listening to this podcast. With uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Everybody loves LeBron James. He's LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Fourth fourth championship, babe. He won. Good for him. Number four. Still not as many as Michael. MJ. All right, that's Dear Elise. How'd you like that, Elise? Was that fun for you? You want to keep doing that? I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Just dip into relationship advice once a week and see what we get. Why not? Got to find something kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Good luck. (laughs) Go down that rabbit hole for two hours again. It's not going to take that much time. I think there's there's plenty of funny relationship advice things on that. Good. On that thread. I mean, you saw it. Like, my boyfriend wants to fuck LeBron James. Should I be worried? Nah. Nah. LeBron James will never give him a I chance. I mean, everyone listening out there, if LeBron James knocks on your door and says, hey, you want to fuck? <laughs> like, I probably wouldn't do it. But like, <laughs> there would be a moment <laughs> where I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Maybe? <laughs> No, I think I think so. I think you, you think you would. 
It's the prime. I mean, imagine the story. Imagine the story. Oh, I toast would. Well, I know. Why not? I mean, I think the thing about your hall pass is I think it's actually like a hall book. He knocks you up. You get child support. Man, you're set. That's true. And possibly a very good at basketball child. Yeah. yeah. My child, I would love for win, my child win. to play basketball. I don't think there's good odds that he'll be good at it. He'll be tall, probably. He's probably not going to be that good at basketball. I played basketball. Did you, though? I did. Were you good? B team, babe. Starting on the B team. Oh, shit. Yep. Everybody that's on the B team ends up playing for the Boston Celtics. Yeah. It wasn't the C team, though. Can we end the show now? Yeah. That's all we got time for this week, Scott. So if uh, these listeners, if you were listening and you liked our podcast, you can check out all the other shows that we do over at Doof media.com do we have anything special going on this week um we have our bonus episode um for you mentioned it earlier when we were talking about stephen king yeah matt and i are doing a bonus show where we uh watch movies based on stephen king adaptations once a month and record a little bonus podcast for our patrons and the way that you can get access to those podcast is by donating to the patreon mm-hmm. over at patreon.com slash doof media so if they wanted to listen to those episodes scott how much would they have to get that's at the ten dollar level all of our bonus podcasts mm-hmm. there's four of them going on right now four bonus podcasts um there is matt's podcast with his brother the freeman bros where they just talk about random shit it's where they talked about uh Last week, they talked about education and the school system. It's a very interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Doofovers, where some of our other members of our organization look at things that Matt and I have already done Doofcast shows on and maybe have a difference in opinion. And then there's a new show coming soon from Elliot and Ruben that I don't know if they've announced yet, so I'm afraid of saying what it is, so I just won't. And then there's, of course, our show, Other Levels of the Tower, which is our Stephen King adaptation podcast what so, about the one that you and i are gonna do uh what is that one the cereal party one i got all this new cereal at least yeah at least ordered a bunch of cere- the most fucking expensive cereal on the planet it's so good now it's delicious i refuse to believe it's better than the two dollar cereal it's better for you mm. it cereal. is cereal is cereal babe it's better for you remember when we went to the cereal killer restaurant oh, in london so much fun and like it was until halfway through the meal that you realized it was a play on words. Yeah, but it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. OK, uh, that's it for this week's show. We'll be back next week for the finale of season two. The dearly beloved. And more dearly. Yay. You forgot to say if they wanted to review us.